This video is sponsored by Christoph Frey. For excellent poly horror games, check the link in the description below for some of his works. What's up, y'all? Boogie Knight here, and I know you can see my ugly mug in this video. Maybe it'll be more of them. Who knows? Anyways, with that being said, welcome back to another indie game. Tonight we're taking a look at a game called Hamilton. This is a first-person atmospheric horror game. It is currently free to download on Itch.io, so if you like what you see, link's in the description below. Uh, yeah, I was just trolling Itch.io because it's been a hot minute since I've done anything like that, and this kind of came up first in the horror section. Um, and actually, it is the developer's first game ever. So, since you all know that I like to do what I can to promote indie developers, particularly if it's their first, second, or third game, uh, particularly if it's good for that matter, um, I want to do what I can to support them. So yeah, so with that being said, let's take a look and dive right in, shall we? This is Hamilton. Okay. It's been three weeks since my best friend disappeared. She went into Hamilton Forest with her boyfriend and nobody has heard from them since. Police say they performed a search of the area and found nothing. They said that further exploration was too dangerous and that the risk to the search party was too great. I can't imagine how you must feel, the officer had told me. His blank gaze failed to meet my eyes, but you can't go looking for them. Yeah, bad chance about that. See? Exhibit A. When I woke up this morning, a moldy page was lying on my living room floor. A set of coordinates written in what I immediately recognized as her handwriting. It's the dead of winter, but I don't care. I need to know what happened. That's the spirit. Oh, and it just drops us right in. Oh, okay, so... Wands... Yep, can we sprint? Yes, we can with shift. Can we crouch? No. We do have a flashlight, albeit it's grainy. Um, and something about a poster? There we go. Missing poster, Allison Bunker, last seen Hamilton Forest. If you have any information, something call. All right, I'm already digging uh, the l one and done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm already digging the low poly, low res graphics. As y'all know, I'm a huge fan of that, i.e. Team Kristoff. Oh, we do have something here though, which is, click, okay. This must be her backpack. I must be getting close. Hang on, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have a whole area to explore. Okay. Or not, that's cool too. Uh, yeah. Digging it, I really am digging the graphics. Almost kind of reminds me a little bit of, oh god, what was that game? Cozy? Yeah, Cozy. It's been a few years since I played that, not for the project. Sounds like the blizzard's getting heavier. You know what this is kind of reminding me of? A little bit of, um, oh, what was that game with Sean Dean in it? Uh, Colot. Still have yet to get into it. It, it genuinely freaked me the frig out. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, over here. I love the snow, the low poly snowflakes that are just kind of hanging out there. That's brilliant. Uh, what do we got? Warning: extreme hazard. No rescue beyond this point. Well, the plot tells us to go, so let's let's do it. What do we have here, though? They look like. Are these her boots? Why would she have taken them off in this cold? I don't know, trench foot maybe? Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. And we have crossed the Rubicon. So unless he's got some hikers on him, who knows? Hang on, looks like blood. Hopefully not, but it probably is. I'm gonna go on and say, we'll say that was blood. But it sounds like the blizzard is getting worse. Hamilton Forest, I wonder if that actually does exist, or that was just a made-up name. I'll have to look into that. Okay. Nope, oh, hello. Her diary? It looks more or less intact. Maybe there's a clue inside. Why don't you take her diary with her to the Hamilton Forest? I got this really strange email today about this old place in Hamilton Forest. Well, question answered. Apparently, it's super haunted due to some crazy dark shit that happened there years ago. Okay. Uh, not too sure if it's legit, so I'll bring Jake along just in case. Cops are always super strict about staying out of Hamilton, so who knows? Might be something cool. The next page is torn. Her handwriting is barely legible, shaky, and spaced unevenly, like she was writing with her eyes closed. It's going to be great. A really strange haunted. Sure if it's legit, but might be something. Cool. Bring Jake. Staying. That's ominous. Okay, well, follow what looks like the blood stains, because, you know, that's always logical. Oh, hang on, I got another sign. Caution, too late. 
Okay. Oh, let's just turn around again. I'm just joking. Uh, yeah. You know, this is reminding me of actually a little bit. Um, that episode of Civil Protection with Harkov and Ross, the tunnel. It's a great episode. Kind of sucks that was one of the last hurrahs of um, Civil Protection. But, yeah, things happen. All right. Let's do this. Ooh, that sound effect. Oop. Welcome to Silent Hill. At least that's what it feels like. Some kind of bunker? The lack of ambience in this area creeps me out. I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It really has to... gives you the opportunity to you know, keep your ears open. Yeah. Something up there. Before we do that... Okay, it's just an emergency light. Uh, can we use the computer? Doesn't look like it, but it is a CRT. Yeah, <laughs> I can dig that. Alright, so we have a door there. And a door here. That we cannot use. Well, okay, now I know where we're going. Before we go in there... Water. Oh, hang on. Please report any unusual or anomalous... SCP activity immediately. Our lives may depend on it. All right. Okay. Some sort of sewer tunnel. I think this game is supposed to be pretty short. It said it was a short interactive uh, horror experience according to the Itch.io page, so we'll see how short it is. Door here, we can't do anything with, so we are going right. Not sure what we're talking about here. Okay, there's something there, and there's a. Well, okay, I guess we have to. Actually, hang on, let's. Whoa, was that the same case it was in the beginning? I don't recall her face looking like that in the outside. I'll have to look at that later. Well, depending on how short it is, we might actually come back to that. Okay, so let's not go in there, because it looks like we have a room here. That looks like another corridor. It's almost impossible to completely restrict entry into the exclusion zone. In Chernobyl? Where are we? Uh, simply because it covers too big of an area which borders multiple towns in the region people wander in all the time. And the amount of missing persons reflects that. Providing extensive warnings about some fake dangers has proven to be ineffective, given they don't usually dissuade the foolhardy. It's hard to lie to families about why the police can't send search parties out to look for their loved ones. It's hard to stop them from doing it themselves. Okay. Still can't use the computer. But we have another door. It's okay, I don't want to use that anyway. Um, Sorry. Itchy head. Got my hair cut earlier, so... Onward and upward. It's getting tight in here. Um, okay, we've got a door here that we can't use. Looks like kind of a gallery. Looks like there's something down there. <clears throat> nope. Uh, we have two areas we can go to, but we do have something we're going to look at over here, next to the bin. Upon entering the exclusion zone, individuals are immediately at risk, though evidence suggests that the chance of them being affected by the phenomenon... Stalker? <laughs> ...is linked to their distance from what is currently thought to be the centermost point of the exclusion zone. Satellite imagery shows that this area contains an as-of-yet unexplored cavern located within the eastern region of Hamilton Forest. All attempts to reach the cavern have been met with failure. Okay, so before we go down there... I kind of want to get away from those footsteps. Kind of creep me the frig out. Never mind. Is that? What is that? Did we already... 
Okay, I think... Yeah, that's what we already looked at. Never mind. Uh, anything else we can look? No. Another door. Okay, stay frosty. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeesh, stay to the light. Yeah. It's getting really pitch dark around here. Okay, so we got a door we can't use, and... Hello? Lady? Be that you? What? Oh. A dismembered body. Wait, hang on. Is that a... Is that a plunger sticking out of its head? Whoa. Hamilton Forest Monitoring Station, we are okay. Please send, please S, send emergency assistance. Ants, okay. Sorry, that was Ray texting me. I'll get back to her in a second. I can't. Okay, look, I've seen the X Files episode um, where the thing just flies out of their faces. What was it called? Firewalk? Creepy one. That definitely stuck with me. Okay, March 6, 1994. I'm giving this letter to you in confidence as I don't want to incite a panic, but this is urgent. The most recent occurrence has forced us to reevaluate the estimated outermost perimeter of the exclusion zone. Assuming as we have been that the zone is a perfect circle, our new data suggests that the Hamilton Forest Monitoring Station lies within the bounds of the exclusion zone. I am forced to conclude that the only reason we have not yet been affected by the phenomena is that the station lies so close to the edge that the probability of an event occurring is extremely low. Please be reminded that I cannot provide any information that indicates what the chances exactly are, as we still do not know potential triggers have, as we still do not know potential triggers and have not been able to find any meaningful patterns or indicators which would inform us of an imminent event aside from proximity. I'm proposing an immediate evacuation under the guise of the writing stops abruptly. There's an old Polaroid photo lying next to the letter. That's not creepy at all. Yeah. I, I, I can't get over this. Is that... Were they impaled? Did their spine abnormally grow? Is that a flatworm? Is it a plunger? I'm trying to make sense of that. It's going down there again. Um... Do we have any other areas we need to... Yeah, we... We have to go down this dark area, don't we? To another door? That's not working. <sighs> yes, I know. I have an overactive imagination. Shut up. Y'all know that about me. I've talked about it. Uh, what? Okay... Good lord. That still looks like a ghoul. Nothing there. And the running has abruptly stopped. Can't see squat. Oh, okay, it's just a wall. And some red stuff. Can we walk on it? Apparently we can. I'm just gonna say it's rust. Okay, so we're at the base of the gallery that we saw upstairs. <sighs> I... Don't like that one iota. We're done going down dark hallways. I'm just gonna keep to the light. As it promptly gets darker. Are we... I can barely see anything. But it looks like it's getting redder. Oop. Oh god, it's her. Well, here we go. Jump scare time. Three, two, one. 
Oh, God. It didn't take long for the authorities to figure out where you had gone. Mysterious clues, supposedly left by those who had perished in the exclusion zone, had led many to meet the same fate. Rescue attempts were pointless. The police would say you perished in a car accident while searching for your friends. Your body burned beyond recognition. Your story ends here. That's Hamilton. Um, up until the end, I liked it a lot. I think the ambience was good. I think um, the fact that it got darker and there were some more abnormalities was very well done. I really respected that. I feel like, though, the triple head... After you found your, uh, after you found her body, uh, could have been a little bit different. Like maybe a slow build up to that confrontation. Like maybe if you're about to exit the bunker. But I mean, it's the developer's first game, so I feel like there's some potential. Um, graphics were fine. I had no issues with the low res, low poly. I mean, it's not everyone's thing, but to each their own, you know. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be seeing what else these this developer comes up with. I believe it's just one person, but I could be wrong. But let me know what you guys think. What did you like? What did you dislike? Let me know in the comments. I read every comment, and I try to reply to every comment. Um, also, a big thank you to Christoph Frey, of course, being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project. If you like uh, low-poly horror games with emphasis on character development, plot, story, character interaction, fear factor, ambience, the whole package... Check them out. Link is in the description below. I guarantee you, you will not be let down. So, of course, with that being said, before I call it night, if you like the Boogie Night Project and you want to find out more, I do have a Twitter page as well as a public Discord channel, and links to both of those are in the description below, as well as a link to my temporarily defunct Twitch page. And hey, if you are interested in doing a modicum more for the project, I do have a Patreon where for as little as $1 a month, you get access to exclusive content, such as the patron only section of my Discord, as well as patron-exclusive uploads that go up every Saturday per week. Uh, I'm actually working on one right now for my buddy Jure, and I'll be starting a new one in the near future. And all proceeds go towards getting me a new computer because my current one is a complete piece of garbage, as y'all well know. Otherwise, with that being said, I hope y'all have a fantastic night, and I will catch y'all on the flip side, alright? Peace. Hey y'all, while my gratitude knows no bounds for every single bit of love and support y'all have shown for me over the years, there are a few people that I legitimately want to take a few minutes to thank for their unending help and support. Uh, first of all, obviously Christoph Frey, not just for being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project, but also for letting me use his music from Gabba Transistor for in my streams, as well as him kind of coming up with his own little fragment for my new introduction to um, the Boogie Night Project. And speaking of introductions, the intro, as well as my YouTube banner page, um, were done by the amazing Oren. You might know him as Oren VDK, as well as Oren from Couple K. Cakes. Thank you so much, Oren. I really do appreciate the time you took to put together everything from the banner to the beautifully done introduction that merged perfectly with Kristoff's music from Gabba Transistor. So big thank you to them. And also, this would not be possible with the help of my extremely amazing patrons, both current and former, uh, such as Lexi Kitty, Silverleaf, Barry Grave, Harkov, Jure, Larian, and Oren, as well as a few others that have come and gone over the years. Y'all, this would not be possible without your help and your support. Um, I know I have not been able to provide much in the way of um, uh, giving back in Patreon rewards, but I am in the process of revamping my Patreon as well as the rewards that I can do, so be prepared. Um, I know I joke about it, uh, saying that if you're morbidly fascinating, check it out, but if you do want to give um, to the Boogie Night Project, that is the easiest way to do so, and I am legitimately setting aside funds to buy more hardware for my computer, as well as making things look more professional but once again, very big thank y'all to everybody who has supported me from the beginning all the way to the present, um, as well as those individuals that have gone out of their way to help. So once again, guys, thank you so much for all your constant love and support. My gratitude knows no bounds, and I'll catch you on the flip side. All right? Peace.